And there we are. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 164 of What Does This Button Do? It's an educational show about smartphones and tablets with us, Geeks on Tour. Today's beginner's lesson is using Google's keyboard to type faster on phones. But first, Chris has a quick tip. What do you have there, Chris? Hi, everybody. I showed this tip at a seminar that we did this last week, and I thought, oh, yeah, we, that was a good one. I like I like telling people about this. So it has to do about uh, QR codes. Uh, QR codes, you know, are those funny looking square things. And we have done a show on a couple of shows on them before episode 146 and episode 102. Both of those taught about scanning QR codes immediately and about making your own QR codes. But what if you don't have time to scan and see the results right away? Here's my example. See that sign? It's was a billboard at a Civil War park that we were at in Mississippi somewhere okay. a while ago. If you say so. <laughs> and if you look closely, there's a QR code on it. And it says, scan this QR code to watch a video of the reenactment of the war of the battle that took place here at Railroad Redoubt. Well, I took a, instead of scanning it and watching the video while we're standing there in the hot sun, I just took a photo of that. And then using Google Photos and that little button there with the two dots in the middle is called Lens. So let me show you how that works. So this is my, this works the same on an iPhone or an Android. This happens to be my Android and because it's Google Photos. So Google Photos works the same. So I go to Google Photos and I'll bet you I can find that picture by searching for QR code. Oops. If you spell it right. <laughs> I've got, geez. New fingers. <laughs> All right. So here are all the pictures that came up with QR code. And there is that one of the Civil War battlefield with that QR code right here. So the button I'm talking about is this third button on the bottom and it's called Google Lens. I tap it and it just starts investigating the, what's in front of it. And look at that right there. It pops up and says, oh, I see a code here that will take you to YouTube. Is that what you want to do? Below you are the tracks of what historically wow. was known as the Southern Railroad of Mississippi. This rail line, which connected Vicksburg to Jackson yes. and via Jackson points elsewhere in the... Ah. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Way cool. So if you go to the next slide, uh, there's I have a QR code on here that you don't need to get out your phone and scan it right now, but just snap a picture of it. And if you have Google Photos, you can scan it later. And this QR code will give you the form that you can sign up for our free newsletters and get your weekly tech tip. Wow. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Do we have any questions? I don't see anybody in there, but let's see. Oh, just a bunch of hello, hello, hellos. Hello, 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 hello back. It's good to see you all. Oh. Hi, everyone. I'm Jim, and together here with my wife, Chris, we are Geeks on Tour. Do you think your smartphone is smarter than you? And do you have questions about your Android phone or your iPad tablet? And how do you learn about these amazing devices? Well, we are geeks, also known as <laughs> propeller heads, who teach. And we think the best way to learn is a little bit at a time, but on a regular basis. So we've come up with this live YouTube show that we deliver a couple times a month anyway. And you will learn, we pick a topic on smartphones and we go into a little bit of depth on that topic each week. And every show is archived on our website, geeksontour.com. Wow, that's really cool. So, Chris, where are we now? 
we're home. I'm sure people can probably tell because we have our fancy studio background behind <laughs> us. But we are we will be headed out for another RV rally next week. We're going to Georgia for the Escapees ACRE rally. And just a <laughs> I posted this photo on Facebook this week. Thought I'd do it again here. When we're home, I happen to discover old photos all the time. And this one I just had to scan. It's my it's my mom and that's me in my in the middle and my grandmother. So they were in heels, right? Were <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm the shortest one. Yeah. And I scan how did I scan it? I scanned it using photo scan. And if you want to know how that works, see episode 134. All right. Well, our beginner's lesson today is about Gboard. It's a better way to type faster on a smartphone or a tablet. Yeah, those little tiny keyboards are just are just painful if you have to go key by key and press the space bar. So swipe typing, also known as glide, some places I've seen it called flow or gesture typing, means just one finger and you rub it over the keys, making sure to hit every letter of the word you're typing. Only lift your finger in between words. So that's what that picture is showing there. If you wanna type quick, you start with your finger on the Q and keeping your finger on the keyboard, drag over to the I, the U and the I mm -hmm. down to the C and over to the K and only then do you let go. And what it, it's just very, very smart. The Gboard notices every character that your finger has touched. It can understand all the possible combinations, and then it matches those against a dictionary to decide what the word is, and it does it very quick. And go ahead and play the play the 555 video here. Okay. Hi, this is Chris Gold with Geeks on Tour, and I want to show you my favorite way of typing on these little keyboards on your smartphones. I don't like having to tap key by key, so I'm just going to type Mary had a little lamb. And I have to tap each letter, and I have to type the space bar in between. That is just painful. I prefer to do what's called swiping or gliding which means I just rub my finger, one finger, and I only lift up in between words. So Mary had a little lamb. Notice I'm, it's putting in a space for me automatically. What do you think? Wasn't that a little bit faster? So this is an Android phone, and it's just the built-in keyboard that came with it. Here's my iPhone with just the keyboard that came with it. And notice I cannot swipe. If I rub my finger over the keyboard, it just doesn't work. But did you know that this keyboard is just an app? It can be replaced with other apps. I like the one called Gboard which is by Google, and I've installed it on this phone. We'll show you how to do that in another video. Now I can swipe. I'll type the same thing. And notice I didn't even get to the E there, but it figured out what I wanted. Oops, but it got that one wrong. If I tap back on there, I can fix that. And I can also double tap the space bar to put in a period and a space. <laughs> All right. I We learned about swiping long ago. So when it's we, been a while. I think we learned about it. It was an app called Swipe, S-W-Y-P-E, which went out of business after Gboard <laughs> came out. So it's I not around. Why. But we've been using this then on these phones since the beginning, and I just love it. Let me let me do a little bit of of live demo here. So one, this is this is my iPhone, and. 
So quick, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog, right? That uses every character in the alphabet. So the quick, and now how do I know that I have the G board? It's that G right there that lets me know that this keyboard is the G board. Brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. How did it do? The quick jump, pretty good. And then punctuation marks, this is a wonderful thing. You just hold down on the period key and there's all your punctuation marks. Now you do need to be a touch typist. If you are a hunt and pecker, this isn't for you. Well, you have to know at least where the keys are on the keyboard, on a regular standard keyboard. Yeah, but you, you have to know them fairly intimately, <laughs> you know, you, <laughs> okay. because it's, you can't, you can't touch and then hunt around and, oh, there's the other one. And then there's the other one. Well, I don't know, maybe you can, but it's, it's really meant for if you do know the keys on the, on the keyboard. Okay, so how do you, and we demonstrate on the iPhone because you have to install the keyboard, but I use it on the Android as well because there's lots of other features. Even though the Android's default keyboard can do this swiping, the Gboard can do lots, lots more. So I still install it on the Android as well. And so there's two videos now, one on installing on iPhone and another one on installing on the Android. 556, 557. Hi, this is Chris Golden with Geeks on Tour, and this short video is about installing the Google Keyboard, Gboard, on an iPad, and it's the same process on an iPhone. So it's actually an app. So first you have to download the app. So you just search for Gboard, and there it is. I have had it before, so I have this little cloud icon. If you've never downloaded it, you will see Get there. It is free. When it is done, you could just open it, but all that does is take you to your settings, and I would rather you see how that works. There is the app right there, but to finish installing it, you need to go to your settings and under general, there is keyboard. And notice it says I have four keyboards. One of them is Gboard. So go into the settings for that, and you do have to allow it full access. Gboard can do a lot with, with your typing, and you do need to allow it. Now, when you're at some place where you want to type, you need to make sure that you are using the Gboard, the Google keyboard. If not, if you don't see the multicolored G up in the upper left, then you long press on this little globe, and you should see it there. You choose it. Now you're able to swipe. Now you can swipe. Once you have it installed, you may want to check its settings. And to do that, it's another long press on this globe button. And there's settings up at the top. So for example, under keyboard settings, there's a bunch of things. They're all on. And I noticed that show number row is on. If you say, well, that usually takes up too much space, I want to turn that off. So now you see there are no numbers available at all. You would have to tap on that number button in order to get the numbers. But let's see what adding that number row does do. To get to settings, long press, settings, keyboard settings, and turn that show number row back on. And what is, it hasn't added a whole other row. It's just added them above those letters. So how do I type a five? You just long press on the T and it becomes a five. Long press on the U, it becomes a seven, etc. So that's a little bit 
about going to the settings of Gboard. Okay, so that is installing it on the iPad or iPhone. And I still want to show the video on installing it on Android too. There, it, it's almost the same, but there are just a couple little differences on the Android and the in the and, iPhone. And which is that 58? That's no, that's 57. 57. Well, this is the school of design tutorial. Tutorial is how to install the Google Keyboard, the Gboard, on an Android device. Gboard is an app. That means you need to open the Play Store and search for Gboard. And there it is, the Google Keyboard, and install. Once it's installed, you could open it, but really you're not opening this, you're not using this app, you're using the keyboard. So I want to show you where the settings are for keyboard. You go into your main settings on your Android, and it's under general management, language, and input. And on-screen keyboard. So I don't see Gboard here yet, so I need to tap on the plus to manage keyboards and turn on the Gboard. And we have to say OK. And that's it. You're done with the settings. Now when you are somewhere where you need to use the keyboard, like an email, this is not the Gboard. I know because I don't see the multicolor G. You can tap on this little keyboard icon in the lower right and choose Gboard here. Now we're seeing the G and we know we're using Gboard. How do you get to the individual keyboard settings? That's by tapping on the G and then the gear for settings right there. So for example, under preferences, we have the option to have a whole row, a dedicated row for numbers. It takes more space on the screen, but I kind of like that. So I'm going to turn it on and show you what that looks like. Now we have a whole row here dedicated to numbers. I like that. So that's how to install Gboard and how to get to the keyboard settings on an Android. Good. <coughs> So do you see just those little differences between the iOS and the Android? I mean, the a whole separate row of numbers means a whole separate row mm. on Android, where it just meant the numbers on the top of the keys. Yeah, I like that. I use. That. I like the whole yeah. separate row, yeah. Right. And I hadn't had that turned on. This is why I love doing the shows. <laughs> I, I learn new things in getting prepared for it. Absolutely. All right. Okay. Bill or Karen want to know, uh, does swipe prediction still give autocorrect results that are humorous? Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we still have, have to check. You still. <laughs> before you hit that send button. <laughs> do not let a message go before you have read it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, they want to know what number the Android G board was. That's 557, right? The one we just yeah, looked at. And it's not on our website or anything yet, but it will be. Yeah, it's it's on our. <laughs> it's in we our direct. It. We have it, but you don't. But we'll we'll make that available soon. Because I just made it yesterday. That's right. <laughs> or this morning. <laughs> uh, looks like Pixel has already has Gboard loaded. Just need to select it. Absolutely correct. Because the yeah, those. It's an Android. The Pixel is a Google phone, so, it has so it's going to have the Google keyboard built in, although you still have to choose it to get the added functionality mm. of the Gboard, mm. mm. and that's that's something that, yeah. So you, you, basically your keyboard is an app, and it can be replaced, just like, you know, so many things on these phones are just apps. Yeah, you don't have to settle for what came with your phone. Like like uh, cameras. 
if you don't have a function or a, a feature that you would like in your camera that came with your phone, you can have another phone or a camera app on your phone. And there are a few of them. Next mm -hmm. one. And I, you know, well, you know us, we like everything Google, <laughs> but I, I do like Google the best. Swipe was the first. Swipe is what we used for years and years, but it is no more. And then there's SwiftKey. I hear a lot of good things about SwiftKey, but I'm going with Gboard. Now, one question next uh, that, oh, huh, okay, that I've already been asked is talk about security. Somebody thought that this message said the Google keyboard will store your passwords and credit card numbers. No, 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 no. It, it, it doesn't. Read this carefully. It says Gboard may be able to collect all the text you type, including personal data, such as passwords and credit card numbers. What that means is it, it has to read what you're typing. So this is the same message that you would get with any keyboard. Uh, I'll bet you if a keyboard didn't come with your phone and you had to install that, you would get that message with the default keyboard. Just another click. And this that, that first message is the one that comes up on the Android. The second message is the one that comes up on the iPhone. It says full access allows the developer of this keyboard to transmit anything you type. Now I have played with it. And if you really don't like it, you can say don't allow on the iPhone. And you would still be able to do the swipe typing, but you wouldn't be able to do the translating or the Google search, any of the special things. And if, if you don't allow the access, then you're hog tying your application. It's for, if it was a fly by night a developer, <laughs> then okay, maybe be worried. Google, no. They're not really fly by night. One, one more click. So see, the exact same message comes up if you install SwiftKey. So it has nothing to do with Gboard in particular. It has to do with functioning of keyboards. Keyboards need access to your phone. So that's that's that. I they have to put those messages for legal. You know, it's just like when you buy a mattress <laughs> and it has that tag on it says, do not remove this tag. On it's still up there on the, right, on the right. mattress. It's it's just a legal thing that that has to be there. At least that's my opinion. I like what Gboard does for me. I give it full access. Okay. So then the faster, easier typing is the first thing that is important, but then there's so much more. Double tap space gives you a period, then a space. Uh, punctuate, and I'm gonna demonstrate all of these. I'm gonna demonstrate on the Android. So we do have one more pre-recorded pre piece for the special features of search and insert results, emojis and translate and that is using the iPhone. So video 558. Hi, this is Chris Gordon from Geeks on Tour, and I want to show you three of the special features of using the Gboard keyboard on an iPhone. First is translate, and you'll see a little icon for translate right there. So let's say that you are texting with somebody who speaks Spanish. You don't need to know Spanish. It is saying it will detect the language that you're typing and it will convert it into Spanish. So I can just type, when are you arriving? And then you tap the translate button and it puts it into Spanish. Now I want to say more and do you, oops, you got to make sure you're typing the English correct. <laughs> Do you need a ride? And there it is in Spanish, and I can send. Then to get out of translating, 
do you need a ride yeah, after drinking sure. all those beers? <laughs> <laughs> you always have to look for the little back arrow to get out of it. Next feature is inserting just like that, like that beer up there. How did I do that? Well, there's a couple different ways, but I like just on the keyboard. Here's the key right here for emojis. And then you see GIFs. You will also see the emojis by tapping on the little, the little icons down here at the bottom. We have just little emojis. We have stickers. We have GIFs. We have emoticons and in different languages. And you can then just write, write your own handwriting. I go back to these little emojis and there's a ton of them. You can pick whatever you want. I often use the thumbs up and send that. But if you want a GIF, you can even search. So you want something that is happy and search. And it's showing you animated GIFs about people that are happy. I like that one. So you tap on it and it's copied. Now you have to go up to your message and long press to paste and then send it. And the third special feature is search Google searching. So this is a Google keyboard, right? So the main special feature is about searching. So let's say that I want to tell this person about where to meet us for dinner. What is the restaurant? Without this feature, you'd have to get out of your text messages, over to a Google search, find it, copy the map, and come back here and paste it in. This is how you do it here. You just tap the G for search and search for the restaurant. So a place called Stouts, and that's it. All I do is tap share and send. And the recipient not only has the name of the place where we're going, it has the website, and they can just tap there and get directions. So that was translate, insert GIFs, and search. Oops. Cool. And there's lots, lots more. It's, it's, I had, I had no idea. <laughs> I started researching the Gboard and it just went on and on and on. All right. So now I want to just do some live demonstration using the Android. And my Android happens to be a Note 9, but I also tried it with the, our, our cheapy little Android, which is a $59 phone and everything worked on that too. So this can make a, an inexpensive phone have these capabilities as well. So what do I want to do? I want to first just go into a note taking and do some typing like, you know, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. I, I, I just love that. Now, a lot of people tell me after seeing this, well, that's cool, but I'd rather just dictate. Okay, you can do that too. Absolutely, you but you don't want to do that in a, in a busy place or in a quiet place. Exactly, or in the middle of the night, <laughs> uh, which is when You'll I, wake me up. I do some of my best, <laughs> my best creating. But there we go right there. And to do this, I'm going to, I'm going to read from my, from my Google Photos book so that I'm not having to think about what, I, what I'm going to say. So you just tap the microphone and wait for it to, I love Google Photos, exclamation point. I have collected more than 60,000 digital pictures during my lifetime, comma, and they are all stored in my Google Photos account for free, period. With my phone, comma, a tablet, comma, or a computer, comma, I can view my entire library of photos in a timeline automatically grouped 
by year, comma, month, comma, and day, period. In an instant, I can swipe down the screen from today's photos to those from 10 years ago, period. Is that amazing? <laughs> Oops. Okay. To stop it <laughs> listening, <laughs> you just tap on the microphone again. <clears throat> Now, one question that people have had is, can I do that with my iPhone? And yes, yes, you can. The microphone is just in a slightly different place. So just right there on the space bar. So you long press there. And now you can dictate to your iPhone just like you can to your Android. And stop. So it, it does work on both of them. The microphone is just in a slightly different place. Now, some special things about how this keyboard works. Let's say I, I want to delete. I just want that first couple of sentences. I love Google Photos. Holding down on the backspace key is going to take a while. Watch this. <laughs> hold my beer. Hold my beer. If you hold down on the backspace key and swipe across to the left, now that took that took a little bit of work for me to figure that out, but once I got it, it's pretty easy. You know, you have to go straight across. Oops, now I now I did everything, but there I can bring some I can bring some back. So that's swiping across from left from uh, right to left, and I already showed you if you want to put in a period and a space, just double tap on the space bar. It puts in a period and a space. How about this? Fractions. You ever need to type fractions? <laughs> and it can be it can be really painful. But if I want to type a half, just long press on the one, and there's a half. Or four fifths. Oops, I guess it doesn't have all of them. There's five eighths. It has kind of the most common, the common ones. By the same token, you can do punctuation by long pressing on the period. Punctuation and the parens, for example. So punctuation, parens, and this is in parens. And notice you can still type character by character if you feel if you feel the need. So that's the punctuation. And next is if you see the mark that you want in above one of these keys, anything that's, that's above and to the right of the key means long press. And that's what you get. So if I want the ampersand, it's on the G, I long press on the G, I get the ampersand. The asterisk is on the Z. Just long press and you and you get it. Notice if I do the E though, the E is a vertical bar, but that's not the only thing. Sometimes people need an E with an accent or a grave or whatever those other marks are. Umlaut. <laughs> <laughs> that's on the on the U. Well, it's on the yeah, it's on several letters. Oh, okay. So that's. And then if you just need to back up, have you ever tried to get your cursor like right between that ampersand and the asterisk? And it can be it can be difficult. Just swipe on the oops. Swipe on the space bar. So I can move left and right just by dragging on the space bar. I can do a long press and it gives me a it gives me a magnifier underneath my finger. Oh, really? Yeah. Really That's how nice. it does it on the iPhone. I know. So the the, the pixel, pixel is, is iPhone-like. <laughs> well, yeah, they all. Okay. Clipboard. Here's a cool thing, too. Let's say I'm writing a message, and I want to copy and paste something from our website. So I will go out to our website to get the something. Let's say I just want this first paragraph from our website. So I'll have to long press to get to copy. And just that can be kind of tricky. 
So there, now I'm now in copy mode. I can select all. Oh, I get the whole page. All right, that's fine. So the first page of our website, I just selected it and up at the top here, I can get copy. And let's say I want something from, um, from our newsletters. And I want this paragraph that talks about our newsletters. And I will just, I'll just select that paragraph and copy. Now, <laughs> have I overwritten my first snippet? Have well, I overwritten my first Normally I would page? say yes, but. <laughs> I've always known that there's a way to do this generally, but I've never taken the time to figure it out. Well, with the clipboard of the G board, it is so easy. So if I want to paste in something, I tap on that little G and there's the clipboard right there. And there is our first page and there is the second thing. So, and I can go back and press an enter and then go back to my clipboard and get the second thing. Whoa. <laughs> so there's a lot. And then lastly, I just want to show you translate on the Android because it's slightly different from on the iPhone. All right. My message is full. <laughs> so let me take a new note. If I want to write, well, here, I'll go to a, I'll go to a message. Yeah. So I want to send a message saying in Spanish are when you're going to arrive. So there, I don't see the little translate button right away. So what do you do when you want more? Three dots or three lines? Three dots. And there's the translate. Okay. So I will say, when will you be arriving? When will you be? Okay, I got some. Arriving. <laughs> surfing. <laughs> now you notice what's different? I don't have to press translate. It's doing it on the fly. When will you be arriving? And do you need a ride? Notice it automatically understands that's a question. It puts the regular question mark and the upside down one and I can send it. So that's the difference with translate on the Android. And I think I've done everything I plan to do. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right. So where are we? I guess we're at questions, aren't we? Yep. Yeah. Nope. Wow. <laughs> Got ahead of ourselves here. So let's see, <clears throat> alt keys. So when you're on a computer, Bill says you can use the alt key code. So one half is holding down the alt key and pressing 171 right. on the numeric keypad. So I have no idea if this is doing that behind the scenes, but I don't care. <laughs> right. It's, it's going to give you what you want. I don't need to know those alt codes when it's just available right. here. Okay. So Warren says, Google on my Pixel 3 Excel calls it glide typing, right? And what about Bitmoji? So Lil Ann wants to know. Bitmoji is another app that you can install on your smartphone and it gives you a whole bunch of emojis. Are those the ones that they look like you? Is that what Bitmoji? Is it? I'm not sure. Yeah. But that that was one of the options. Yes. Uh, in the stickers, was it? I don't know. But yes, uh, it, it is it is one of one of the options on my Samsung. It had, was it in here? Your minis. Yeah, I called them your minis. And it makes it, so I have to take a picture of myself, and then it makes all these emojis based on what it comes up with with my face. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And iPhone has the same thing. Right. 
Yeah, a lot of tricks. <laughs> Found them in the mail screen. Stickers. Cool. Stickers, okay. All right. Where are we now? Okay, app of the week. Do we have an app of the week? We do. Instant cart, grocery delivery. This is amazing because when you're working all day on the computer and you just don't want to go shopping, what do you do? <laughs> There's an app for that. There is an app for that. And it is Instacart Grocery Delivery. Chris tried this out yesterday. How did it work? We've known about it for quite a while, but you kind of need to be in a stick and brick house. Actually, you could do it with an RV. It would be a great way to get if there is a participating grocery store near you. But we obviously know that that's the case when we're home. So we did it last night and we just downloaded the app, went into Publix, put in our username, created a password. Actually, I think I just joined with our Google <laughs> and put in a credit card and started adding things to our cart. And within two hours, there was a knock at our door. Right. Hunter. 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 <laughs> and you can track them the whole time. It's like like doing a new Uber. It's like Uber. Right. And when you order a car, you can see where they are and you can chat with them. And he said that they didn't have the wine that Chris wanted, but he, he had to substitute. So. And you do get a text message. You know, he's substituting this for that. Is that OK? But. It but works. so and it, it is also like Uber in that. It's a job opportunity for people. Hunter, this young man who is a personal shopper, <laughs> he gets the order from the app. He goes around to Publix and picks it out and drives it over here. And he gets paid for that. Yeah. And it's all done online. And even the tip is taken care of the delivery charge. It, you know, gosh, it's worth it. <laughs> and you'll end up doing better shopping too, because it's all on your phone. You have the record of what you bought last time. And you're not going to be wandering around picking up stuff that you don't need. And you can do lots of price comparisons because it's all built into the app. Pretty cool. Way cool. Instacart. So check it out. And if it's available for you. <laughs> and it is it. on both Android and I, iOS. Yeah. All right. So we do invite you to become a member at Geeks on Tour. Just go to our website, geeksontour.com, and click on the link there. And see our website, geeksontour.com. That's where you find everything that we got. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Click that little bell, too. That way you'll get notifications when we go live. Other questions? Do they have 19 crimes? Oh, that, that was the one. That was the one. 19 crimes was on the <laughs> list. And I put it in the cart. But yeah. when Hunter went to get it, he couldn't get it. He, he couldn't find it. I don't know. So that <laughs> yeah, was all right. We did okay. And yeah. Well, did you learn something? I know I did. I really did. <laughs> That's what's so much fun about doing these shows. You learn so much. True or false? Every phone can use swipe typing. Just try it. Well, I say false because, I mean, out of the box. Out of the box, Androids will allow you to swipe or glide. iPhones, no. But you can get an app. Swipe glide typing uses just one finger and you lift your finger only when? In between words. Mm -hmm. A shortcut to end a sentence with a period, then a space is A, double tap the space bar, B, double tap the return key, or C, long press the shift key. A, double tap the space bar. The quickest way to enter any common punctuation mark a, tap the numbers to change the keyboard, or B, long press the period. I really like that long press the period, and you see all your 
punctuations. While using Gboard, you can dictate by voice by tapping the microphone icon. On iOS? True. On Android? True. It used to be false on the iOS. Right. So Apple just added that in there. And true or false, to translate from one language to another, you need to type the complete message first and then tap the translate button. True on iOS. <laughs> and on Android, it translates on the fly. Amazing. It is. It's truly amazing. Well, Chris, what's the web page that lists all of our weekly shows? Geeksontour.com. And the menu item is weekly class. And the web page that lists all of our recent newsletters. Geeksontour.com. And it, the menu item is blogs and news. And why do people pay nearly $60 a year to join Geeks on Tour? Well, it gives them several benefits. They can ask questions on our Q&A page, then we promise to respond. They gain access to hundreds of tutorial videos. They get the written notes of these What Does This Button Do show. And a lot of people do pay us just to say thank you for everything that we offer for free. And we like those Thank people. you. Thank you. All right, next time, live show next week? Probably not, because we'll be on our way to Georgia. That's right. We have... Uh... Work to do. <laughs> All right. Well, next show topic, if you have an idea for a topic for one of these, what does this button do episodes, just leave a message wherever you can find us, Facebook, YouTube, our own website, comments, check it out. And leave a comment here on this YouTube video. That's it for this week. I'm Jim. I'm Chris. And we're Geeks on Tour. Keep pressing those buttons. We'll see you next time. Just see what it does. Yeah. It's not going to blow up. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you promise.